Hey, my name is Mark Borshin. I'm CTO of Terminal Security, and let's go ahead and integrate Argo CD with Open Unison uh, using Open Unison's uh, trust for Kubernetes. So this way you're sharing the same groups and same context with Argo CD that you would with Kubernetes. Uh, this is useful um, when uh, you want to make sure that the same groups have authorizations inside of Kubernetes that they do in Argo. Um, other applications like Kiali is a good example where you might want this trust uh, because um, it's actually going to reuse your context. So let's go ahead. I've got a, a cluster here and let's log in. And then I also have Argo. Apps192.168.2104.nip.io. And so you can see we've got Argo up and running, um, but we don't want to use this username and password. We want to sign on and use Open Unison as our developer portal. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is let's go ahead and get our token. And we are going to create, make sure first we are in the right cluster. We are. Cool. So uh, the first thing we are going to do is we are going to create a trust inside of Open Unison. So before we can create that trust, we need a couple of pieces of information. We need the callback URL. We need to create a client ID and optionally need to create a client secret. Now, we're actually not going to create a client secret for Argo CD because um, Argo CD has both a web application component and a CLI component. We want to give you access to both. Uh, and so um, with CLIs, kind of like with Kubernetes, you don't actually need or want a client secret. Uh, think about it, if, if every um, developer had to use that client secret when they wanted to use the Argo CD uh, CLI, you would have to distribute that secret to everybody, which wouldn't be very secret. <laughs> Um, and so uh, it, it really doesn't provide any additional security value at that point. Um, and so uh, once we have done that, the next step is going to be um, configuring Argo to uh, trust Open Unison uh, and give it the correct information to do that. And then finally, um, we're going to create a badge so that when you log into the Open Unison portal, you'll be able to see it. So let's go ahead and get started. So first thing we are going to do is we are going to uh, go ahead and pull up our documentation. Yeah, let's go ahead and drag this in so you can see it and make it a little bit bigger. Oops. So we're gonna pull this over here so you can see it. Uh, Drag it in. All right, so uh, let's go down to our documentation, custom SSO. And we are going to extend the Kubernetes trust. And let's go ahead and grab this sample trust. We're gonna use that as a starting point. And let's pull this in. So we can see what we're up to here. So uh, this is actually an example from GitLab. We're not going to use GitLab. We're going to do Argo. So let's rename everything. And we'll call this Argo CD. Um, we're going to set the client ID to something really original. Argo CD. Uh, we don't need a client secret. So we're going to go ahead and remove that. And uh, we're going to keep this the same. We're going to make it a public endpoint. That's what um, tells Open Unison, hey, we don't actually need um, a, uh, a client secret. We're going to change the signed user info to true. So what this means is that when the user signs in, if it calls the um, user info endpoint, the information that comes back from that is actually signed. Um, GitLab doesn't like it to be signed, Argo CD does. So let's go ahead and 
Uh, the last bit we need is to set up our redirect URI. So if you uh, dig through Argo's documentation, you'll find that there are two callbacks, um, which is also known as the redirect URI. So what this is, is when you're done authenticating with Open Unison, where does Open Unison send you to? So this first one is the web application. Now, obviously, that's the wrong application, so let's make sure to get the right one. And then the second one is for the CLI. So um, if you've used Open Unison and you've used it to log in, you'll notice that uh, when you go to log in, um, it will open up uh, a new browser if you're using the OE login plugin. Um, this works really well uh, for other apps. And so uh, the same thing will happen with Argo CD. Argo CD is going to open up a browser window, ask you to authenticate, and once you're done, redirect you to a little mini web server that's running inside the Argo CD, um, uh, the Argo CD CLI executable to receive that information. So we've got to tell Open Unison, hey, trust this URI or this URL. Uh, why do we have to specifically name the URLs? Well, um, if the client, let's say a malicious client wanted to get this information, what they could do is they could say, okay, I'm going to redirect you over to uh, Open Unison to log in, but then I want to redirect you back to this malicious application. Uh, and so this is a check to make sure that like you're not getting fished or whatnot. Um, and so uh, that's all we need to do to create the trust. There's no client secret in this instance. So let's go ahead and uh, I'm very lazy, so we're going to create it this way. We're just going to do K create F U F. So we've now told Argo CD that uh, we want, or excuse me, we now told Open Unison that we are ready to um, trust Argo CD. Now we got to tell Argo CD to trust Open Unison. So let's walk through those steps. Let's see here. So the first thing we need to do is we need to edit the config map. So K okay, edit config map uh, Argo CD CM and Argo CD. There we go. Uh, and so we need to give it a URL first. Uh, where's the data section? Uh, there actually is no data section yet. Cool. All right, so first thing we're going to do is give it a URL. This tells Argo CD where it lives. Uh, you might think that uh, that seems a little silly to have to tell Argo CD, but it's actually pretty common because we're running behind a lo load balancer. Um, and so uh, Argo CD doesn't always, applications don't always know who they are. Uh, so next we're going to go ahead and create a OIDC configuration. And this is uh, YAML embed in YAML. So I'm going to give it a name. So it's going to be called Open Unison. And the issuer. So we're going to cheat here a little bit. Go ahead and we're on 104. Double check that. Yep. And the next bit is the client ID is called Argo CD. This lines up with our client ID right here. So that's how Open Unison knows which Argo to use, and requested scopes. So, oh, oops, open ID, profile, email, and groups. All right. 
And again, we're not doing a client secret because we want to make sure that um, we are uh, um, able to use the CLI. So we're going to go ahead and save that. Make sure my phone doesn't go off anymore. And with that saved, let's see. I think we should be in business. Yep, so Argo CD picked it up immediately. Uh, let's go ahead and quick log in via Open Unison, see if everything worked. And wow, that was quick, right? You didn't even see it happen. That's how fast it was. So let's check out the user info. And we'll see that we are logged in as our user. That's our issuer. Here are our groups. If we come back here to Open Unison, we can see we've got the exact same group. So um, now Argo CD has the same access to groups that we have. Um, and, uh, you know, one of the things that we're going to want to do is make sure that um, as a user of Argo CD, I'm in fact an admin because I come back here. Uh, let's see, can I go to repositories, connect using SSH? Uh, let's see, can I do... Trying to see if there's something I can do to show you. Like, let's come to uh, uh, projects. Let's create a project. Yeah, so it's not going to let me do it because it kind of happened really quick. But you saw that little error here. Let's try it again. Permission denied. Um, so let's go ahead and set myself up as an administrator. Now, uh, I will constantly say the same thing. Never assign permissions directly to a person. Always assign it to a group. That way you can manage it. Um, so uh, Argo CD uh, has its own built-in RBAC. It's got its own way of doing things. Um, so we're going to go ahead and do that now. So there is a um, config map called uh cube control edit config map uh what's it called argo cd rbac cm and argo cd okay and uh you'll see that there's no data in here so let's go ahead and Paste this in and fix this. So uh, what this is doing, there we go, um, is this is saying the group, Kate's cluster, Kate's administrators will have the uh, role admin. Um, so now uh, we don't actually have um, that group. If we take a look back here, Actually, I'm not even sure if this is going to work the way we have it set up. So this is a group out of Active Directory. Let's see if this works. The uh, example is actually from uh, Kubernetes and Enterprise Guide Second Edition. So uh, I'm not entirely sure this is going to work, but we'll give it a go. All right, so let's close this and come back here and let's log out. Typically, when uh, Permissions change. You need to log out and log back in. All right. Let's see if that actually works. Projects. Uh, nope. It did not like. Yeah, I don't think it liked having commas in there. So let's see here. Is this going to work? I actually wouldn't get escaped. All right, let's try this again. Nope, it does not like that at all. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, pull this all out. Make sure at least we're back to normal.
Okay, cool. So we're back to normal at least. Okay, so uh, we got SSO set up. Let's go ahead and see if um, uh, Argo uh, CLI works. So uh, Argo CD login uh, help. So we want server and I'm pretty sure there is a SSO option. Let me see here. Uh, oh, I, I remember. So we do um, Argo CD server Ah. What did I do wrong? Argo CD login. SSO. All right. Here we go. And yes, we're going to accept the certificate. Now, let me go ahead and uh, I'm actually going to cheat here a little bit because it's firing up a different browser. So the authentication was successful uh, because I already had a uh, token with Open Unison. See local host. And then we come back here. That's good to go. Argo CD. Let's uh, do... Uh, Proj list. Now there's not going to be anything in there. Um, interesting. So uh, I didn't like that, but um, we're signed in, even though there's nothing in there. So uh, we went through that whole gambit. So the last thing we want to do is when we're signed in here, You know, we won't have a badge here. You know, it's a portal. Should have access to everything. So uh, this part is really straightforward, mostly because I already created a uh, uh, image. But um, so what we're going to do is we are going to go ahead and get. Um, oops, we're going to go ahead and grab this. We're going to do kube control apply F. So the only reason why I don't have the, uh, uh, I'm not printing out this whole thing is the fact that um, embedded in here, and we'll show it to you, is a uh, base64 encoded PNG file. That's what the badge will ultimately look like. So if I come here and I hit the refresh button, great thing about open unison, don't have to restart anything. Boom, there's our Argo CD badge. We click on it and, uh, oh, that's right. I need to. Uh, I do need to to correct this. So, uh, kube control edit um, portal URL Argo CD and open Unison. So, uh, really going to be a giant one of these. Here we go. Um, so. Uh, Here's the icon. It's really big. So we're going to skip over all of that. That's a base 64 encoded PNG file. Um, here's our label, the org, and we'll talk about that on another video. And then uh, we want to fix the URL. And so this is the URL that the badge goes to. Now, you don't want badges to show up for people who aren't authorized. So uh, you can, in fact, do that here with the AZ rules. We'll talk about that in another video. Uh, so let's go ahead and save this, close it, and give this a quick refresh. So we should now be pointing. We're pointing to 104. We hit the button, and boom, we're signed in. So uh, thanks, everybody, for showing up, and um, have a great day.